picking up on this whole idea from Matthew 18, this idea of, um, you know, you have a spouse that's basically uh, making bad decisions, uh, living in sin, if you want to use those terms, and uh, you confront them, nothing happens, you know, same stuff. Uh, you confront them with someone else, you know, two of you go, same thing, same result. Then you go and you get the church involved and, uh, you know, you see, see no big change. What do you do? So, um, I, I was thinking, you know, what's a good way to kind of approach this? And I'm, I'm thinking the over and the under. So this is kind of two ways. So too much of something or too little of something. And I think maybe that's a way to just kind of start the conversation. And uh, I'm not sure that I'm going to arrive to a lot of conclusions, hard and fast rules, but uh, maybe more I could spur some thoughts on and help people think about it. To me, in general, I'm going to let you know that I think it's a bit of a slippery, slippery slope, slippery, hold on, <laughs> slippery slope when it comes to these things because, um, well, as I think as we'll see, it, there's a lot of things that are a bit hard to say in or out. It's not a black and white issue, I guess is what I'm saying for a lot of people. So let's start with some overs. So the, the ones that kind of come to mind are um, overworking, uh, overeating, overspending, uh, maybe driving too fast, uh, too many hobbies, so you know, too much time with the hobbies, not enough time with the family. So this is basically like a uh, misappropriation of priorities of time so bad time management I guess you could say that so just being too busy um, some folks have said like well there's been some interesting things actually written on cell phones and uh, well, they're calling it like addiction to like media online media phone addictions electronic addiction so too much too many like videos, too many series, too much time on Facebook, too much time on computers, whatever. So these are all things that, you know, have the potential to disrupt a marriage and a relationship where, you know, people just won't be available or for some of these other reasons, time isn't available or money isn't available. So I don't know. I, I guess I, I'm going to go with overspending because I've actually known people that uh, that's been a big issue and I think it's also a good reason because a lot of a lot of reports say some stuff by uh, I think his name is John Gottman and other folks that I just remember reading they said that money is a huge stressor for many many marriages um, with consumerism and things like that so let's take that one you know there's a lot that you can do health I think uh, you know sex is another one people you know uh, not enough too much I don't know uh, but let, let's go with the spending one let's just take that for an example so let's say that someone in the marriage just well there's two things when it comes to money one is money in and the other is money out right so let's say one person just doesn't have very much motivation in terms of career or financial improvement some people would throw on there the label of deadbeat or whatever and you know, I've heard people on the radio say, well, you know, I just had to get out because they didn't want to go to work enough or they, you know, refused to take better jobs or go back to school or do the things necessary to raise the family income. And so they'd say, well, that's, uh, you know, I don't know, X, Y, Z, that's not enough, not enough effort, not enough, whatever you want to call it. And so uh, I talked to them about it, you know, we've gone to counseling and you know, the money's just not there and they need to do a better job. Or, on the other side, you can kind of have that person who, you know, isn't very good with money management or probably they have a lot of other areas, time management, just um, strong habits, strong personal habits where, you know, they just, they overspend. I mean, plain and simple, they just overspend. They need that new thing. It's that emotional fix. It's that, well, I feel good about myself when, you know, I drive this or I wear this or you know I can go out to eat do this and you know it puts a lot of pressure on the household income and so some people have said well you know uh, I talked to them about it you know they didn't change we went through a plan we made a budget they wouldn't stick to it um, you know I you know people will get all the way to the point of you know should I you know, well, what should you do you know should you 
uh, cut up their credit card? Should you, you know, kick them off the account? Should you not share your money with them? Should you put them on a, uh, some people say like a budget, like an allowance basically is, is what it ends up being. So you really end up kind of like uh, taking the power from that person. Uh, and in a sense you can do that with money, uh, you know, if you have that, that overspending individual, assuming that you're the person that is, you know, largely uh, making most of the, that you're the main, main income uh, earner, you're the main earner in the relationship. You, you maybe can do that, but in a lot of these other situations, I mean, what are you going to do if the person overeats, you know, or if they're just off with time management or they lack motivation to, you know, do certain things to, I don't know, maybe it's not illegal, but I mean, like, stop smoking or, or something like this that, or, you know, go and exercise. You know, those are the areas where you really, I mean, there's nothing you're going to be able to do. You're just going to be able to to talk with them and if they don't want to hear it then maybe you could you know like that verse says go with someone else get a second person to kind of weigh in on the situation and if they still don't want to hear it I mean so the question is I mean are these types of things grounds for divorce can you then go to this verse and say well I talked to them about it uh, me and this other person talked to them about it and then me and the church talked about it you know we went and did like a, a session or something with the uh, pastor or the pastoral counselor or whoever and you know they just things pretty much are the same now here's why it's a slippery slope and here's why I think it's a bit difficult on a number of levels before I talk about the slippery slope though I should say this I think the starting place has to be what did I mean we ha we know for sure that people asked and Jesus about this and that you know his answers were recorded and he says, he doesn't include any of these things, you know. Um, he says that if there's a situation of sexual immorality, then, then that's, that's the, the only one he mentions, you know. Uh, and even in that situation, he doesn't command that people must get divorced. He just says that there's the option to in that situation. So I think that's one important thing to think about. The other important thing is that why is it a slippery slope well it's a slippery slope because what are you what if uh, going back to the money situation what if you know they uh, you know the final confrontation or whatever or the first month of counseling at the church with the church pastor or the church counselor was in February so March comes along they do pretty good you know maybe they do better they show some signs of improvement but they still overspent right uh, how are you gonna categorize that or what if they nail it you know you guys are on budget uh, by March or, or sorry by April uh, the second month into it I mean boom you guys hit your numbers and everyone's really happy and you're thinking ah you know okay now we're like on the road to you know saving and investing and building wealth and all this May is a disaster. Who knows what happens? There's something, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe it's a household thing. Maybe it's a combined thing. But maybe they just go out and spend. Um, I mean, so what do you say in that situation? Is it like, well, I mean, okay. Like, game over? That's it? And just the thing is, I mean, like I said, I'm not going to try to have a lot of, uh, I mean, case-by-case -case answers, because I don't really think there are. Uh, I think you're going to have these a bit complex situations where, honestly, it's like people are going to have their struggles, and it's going to take them time to, like, retrain, refocus, set new habits, get over, usually there's some, like, uh, underlying reason, like I said, why people overspend. Either they're just not very disciplined in general, or you know they spend because it, it makes them feel a certain way. They haven't figured out how to kind of like get a pickup some other way, you know, by by going for a walk or reading a book or listening to music. You know, they've kind of just gone to the tried and true thing in their life, and that's been you know pull out the card and let's get it going. You know, pick up a new shirt, pick up some new shoes, do this. Uh, you know, go out for dinner, meet up with the folks, do, you know, whatever, vacations, whatever. Um, obviously, this is a, is a tough thing, and a lot of people are in debt. And so, you know, I think it applies to a lot of folks. I also think it's pretty clear that the studies show that, 
money is a huge, huge deal on, um, huge stressor on marriages. But just the question is really, can you can you say that? Well, that's that's going to be one of those areas where you could just say, well, that's a deal breaker. Or if it's, you know, some other area, and they're you know they're doing they're taking steps, but you know a lot of people that I've seen that are trying to work through the process of self-improvement, overcoming uh, addictions or other things, you know, it is kind of a, a one step forward, two steps back, or switch it, two steps forward, one step back, right? I mean, it's a process, you know, it's not like they just overnight fix and, and they're this whole new transformed person with all new habits and all new techniques and ways of, of dealing with life's difficulties and um, it just doesn't work like that. So this is why I generally, as I thought about this video, had a tough time being able to give a strong endorsement and seeing strong reasons why, you know, there's a lot of uh, support for this kind of idea where, um, you know, people should just leave in these situations. If, if it, you know, if you were to say that, well, all of these are valid reasons anytime people just basically can't get their act together or be better or you know improve in essentially whoever is the person considering walking out according to their timeline you know then then if they're out in those situations would you really want to get married to someone like that you know and and what's the really point of what's really the point of getting married anyway given that people are all kind of works in progress why would you i mean why would God even really want to put forward this idea of divorce or divorce of marriage in the first place? Because again, like who would really be able to stand the test of time? Who would really be able to step up to the plate in every category always as fast as their spouse would like them to? It's, I mean, that's probably not going to happen. You know, if you look at real people in real marriages, that's probably well, it's just probably not very realistic. And so to say that, well, anytime someone doesn't kind of step up and get their act together fast enough, uh, then divorce is a, a viable option. Why well, get married? I mean, and why? certainly why bring children into the world um, if you look at the stats of how, how poorly children do with just one, one spouse in the picture, you know, just a single, single mom or dad. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not co-parenting with anybody. I don't have children, so uh, I can't really speak to that. But it just seems like it's such a shaky foundation to one, get into marriage in the first place, and then two, to bring children into that kind of situation, knowing about how much they really need a mom and a dad. And I mean, if the, the foundation is so shaky as well, you know, they can't stop smoking or, you know, they have trouble managing money or they're not a very good earner or I don't know they're overweight or uh, you know they don't tithe enough or they don't spend enough time with the kids I didn't really talk much about the um, the unders the you know they're they're not very they they don't do enough cleaning etc 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 you know um, it just seems like well I think you get where I I stand on the issue. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, hope this helps. Just spur on some thoughts, and we'll talk to you later.